And tonight on PM Express, a conversation about the continuous depreciation of the city against the dollar, which has today led to the closure of shops by the Ghana Union of Traders Association as the dollar hits the 13 city threshold. High inflation rates, which now stands at almost 38%, high taxes, dollar to city rate, uh, nearing 13 cities are the issues affecting these businesses. Plus, the latest released by the Ghana Statistical Service on producer price index shooting up to over 45%. Question is, are we in a hopeless situation? But what does the latest 45% producer price index mean to businesses? This is what it means. Consumer inflation is at 37.2%. Now, Producer inflation, 45.6%. And one thing you should know, anytime this increases, it will affect this. Because definitely, um, manufacturers, uh, businesses would always transfer the cost onto the consumer. That has led to what has happened today. Day one of strike in full force. Five days more to go, according to Guta. And what are the issues? Just like I said, exorbitant tax rates, continuous depreciation of the city, and the others, just like what I shared with you. Now, let's look at the breakdown, and that will marvel you. Look at in August, we had 39.7%. That's the yearly change in producer price inflation, just in August. Now, fast forward to October, we are here, 45.6%. This is the breakdown, all of that here. Industry is 54.5%. Industry is even more, higher than the general 45.6%. Look at mining and look at manufacturing. They are all on the high. But then come and look at water supply, sewage, and then look at electricity and gas because we've had upward adjustments of tariffs in recent times and construction. Of course, a lot of people, contractors will go and they will buy all of these um, uh, 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 materials that they need for the construction. And that has gone up to 25.1%. What is the issue here? Dollar. CD to dollar, 13 cities. You need almost 13 cities to get one dollar. And that is the major issue we are having to deal with. And that is what is affecting businesses. What has the Bank of Ghana done in recent times? And what other options are available to us? Look at the green and look at the red. You will realize that all the green are the um, monies that we've received to help cushion us. But has that been enough? No. We still have two opportunities. Those are in red. So we have the Africa Export Import Bank that gave us $750 million. We had the Coco Syndicated Loan, $1.13 billion. Then we had uh, the purchase repatriated forex from gold and oil companies, $83.9 million. That hasn't been enough for us. The dollar is flying and the city is depreciating now we're expecting two more the almighty imf uh, and as you may follow conversations we're still in negotiations we don't know whether we are getting or not yet but then we also exp um we are also waiting for the joint mandated lead arrangers and book runners, the M Labs, which will give us $250 million. And you may have followed the conversation in Parliament. Minority says they will not agree for us to take such a loan. But look at this money, $250 million. If a country like Ghana is chasing $250 million, then you should know that we are really in that situation. So tonight, the question we're asking, are we... Um, in a hopeless situation. Tonight, I've been joined by Dr. Joseph Obing, President, Ghana uh, Union of Traders Association. Sam Agri is General Secretary of the Food and Beverages Association. He joins me in the studio. And Dr. Humphrey Ayim Dake, who is also President of the Association of Ghana Industries, have also joined me in the studio. Virtually, I'll be joined by Professor John Gache. He's Professor of Finance at the University of Cape Coast. And let's have a conversation after this break. Welcome back to PM Express. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. I'm grateful, Dr. Dake and uh, Mr. Uh, Samuel Greek for joining me in the studio. Thank you so much, Dr. Obing, for joining us via Zoom, and Professor Gachi. I'm grateful for your time. Let me quickly start with you because of what happened today with Guta. Let's do an assessment of day one of the closure. How did it go, Dr. Obing? went very well. 
And because this is uh, something that the people are doing from their own free will, it is not something that um, leadership is imposing on them. So for the mass of the people to have expressed their willingness to um, stop working and then express their sentiments um, uh, to government and the powers that be, then, of course, we say that they've done a young man's work, um, this sacrifice. Because they are not doing this sacrifice for themselves. They are doing this sacrifice for the consuming public as well as the uh, 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 Ghana as a whole. Mm. There, there were some, though, who felt that closure of the shops is actually not the solution to the problem and that it will further worsen their plight. Isn't this a genuine concern, Doc? Oh, no. They are, whenever You're closing are shops for six up. good days. It means that six days you won't have sales. Yeah, um, they, it came from uh, themselves. They, they proposed it. I did not do that for them. Mm. If they, they come and say that, okay, Chama, we said that, but now we want you to reduce the days, it's up to them. So mm. we do not have control on them. Whatever it is, they know why they decided to do it so that the effect will be um, um, a fault and then government will come to their rescue. Mm. So um, at that one, but those who are talking and those who, who sought to maybe open, if even in a public holiday, there are some people who open, even Christmas Day where people are killing chicken and all that in their um, houses to eat, there are others who will... Uh, they, they, some people have the habit, and then some people also, they drop it out in the market more than maybe in the house. So normally when we are doing um, some of these things, we give about 5% of those things. And so it is not strange for us. It's not strange for what we have done before. And so it's very normal, and then we give ourselves about 93% success rate. Mm. Um, Mr. Agri, I see that you throw your weight behind Guta. What's your own situation? You see, the situation has been that investors are losing their capital. Okay. And if you are in a country where within three months, 50% of your income or your investment goes down the drain, you ask yourself, how is it going to go in the next few days? Mm -hmm. So you need to take an action that will draw the attention of government to take an action to reverse those trends. Okay. The people that you see in the market, they've had the frustrations going on. The investors who cannot come on the streets to make sure that certain things are done right. You are the mouthpiece. Mm. And you need to experience it, feel it, and then let the public know what is happening. Those that we see them closing their businesses, it's not anybody who is coercing them to do that. Okay. But then they are sending home a signal to government to say, this we cannot take anymore. We need to do something about it. You see, for the last three months, we expect to hear government announcing certain interventions that will instill confidence in the people. And then gradually, either the city will stay where it is or it will start reversing gradually. Mm. But no one has said anything from government as to what they want to do to ensure that this trend of depreciation will cease. All that we hear is the president saying, we know what is happening to Ghanaians. We understand. Okay. What are the solutions that you want to put in place to ensure that these people on our investment goes down? Because you see, at the end of the day, whatever you do, from manufacturing, from import, everything that we import, which is raw material base, goes into production. Okay. And therefore, it goes to the final consumer. Between this chain, if they are not able to afford what you are producing, then it becomes a problem for your production. So you have goods in the, in, in the warehouses that are going bad because people cannot afford. Consumption levels have gone down. Then you have to take an action and ask why and what is happening. So if government is not announcing any interventions to make sure that what is happening, we are gradually reversing them, then obviously they will take an action that will make you wake up if you are sleeping. Mm. 
Mm. But uh, more worrying is what the Ghana Statistical Service shared today, 45% for producer price index. Dr. Dake, um, we've already spoken about uh, 13 cities, almost 13 cities you need to take $1. We've also spoken about the high inflation rate, which is at 37.2%. Now we're talking about high taxes. What does all of this mean to your business? <laughs> what does all this mean to the businesses? As you mentioned, if the producer price index is moved to 45%, it suggests to you that the underpinning fundamentals that are obvious to us all, one is the exchange rate, uh, driving the inflationary rates, and hence driving the various cost centers of production. It's not a surprise to see that the production, uh, producer price index also moves all the way to 45%. Invariably, it makes cost of production uncompetitive mm. uh, on the local market. And therefore, if your local market uh, cost of production is uncompetitive, invariably higher than what the imported products are, what then do you do to make sure that your local production cost is competitive? Therefore, then you go out to look at policies, policies that may be a hindrance or an obstacle to these uh, PPIs and also uh, various cost centers going up, mm -hmm. i.e., so what are the uh, policies that we've been advocating for? Association of Ghana Industries over the period have advocated that the benchmark discount value policy grants importation to be far cheaper than the production of some essential products. Okay. And we engage government suggesting that at least 43, I recall 43 items were listed when the benchmark discount uh, issues came up, that we have significant capacity that we could ramp up into the years Others ask, do you believe you have enough capacity to mm. uh, feed the entire country? We keep saying you will never have full capacity. However, if you have appreciable capacity, you start from there and you ramp up as demand increases. That policy, we still believe government promised that by the end of this year, they will reverse it fully. It's our prayer and we advocate that as cabinet goes to a meeting sometime next week, uh, when they return from the Washington on the discussion, that policy must be reversed to increase production and revamp the productive sector. Mm. That is one amidst many. Okay. But government says that, um, uh, Dr. Obing, government says you are running away from negotiations because um, I heard the Deputy Trade Minister say that you, you haven't availed yourself for a conversation that would actually bring a solution to this problem. What you have done is actually create a situation where everybody does what they like. Why are you running away from negotiations? Dr. Obing. Yeah, it is not true that we are running away from negotiation. In fact, the Ministry of Trade and Industry is uh, like a home to us. The fact that uh, they are very accessible is also true. But the fact that uh, we've been talking about issues that we are not getting results like the SM rate and the inflation and the interest rate is also true. And the fact that this thing is taking a chunk of our resources is also very true. We are not running away from anything. What he is saying is that they are following the Kumase demonstration. The Kumase's demonstration was um, uh, based on the VAT and the issues around uh, surrounding the taxes. So um, after the Queen Mother in Kumase have intervened and then they stopped, they called us on Friday and then um, brought, uh, gave us assurances that the invigilation that we are doing, they are not going to do again, and also promises uh, the for, uh, foreigners, the uh, um, um, foreigners, illegal foreigners in the retail sector, that they are going to do something about it. So you, you uh, that is for a specific purpose. And that this purpose is inflation, and is estimate, and it is interest rate. And they are all killing us. And even at the meeting, 
we tried to raise those issues, and it was said that we should shelve that one for some time. So it doesn't mean we, we are not running away from anything. We have to be truthful to the facts. And um, we are always open uh, to the extent that people even assume that Guta is in bed with government. People have heard this so many times. So it should not be said that they don't want us to say what is worrying us. That will not be fair. We are saying what is worrying us, our capital is uh, uh, being taken away. It's, uh, it's, it's being spirited away, like the illustration that I've always been doing. So um, 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 uh, that is the issue. Normally, mm. they, they, they use the global phenomenon uh, as an example. But even in this uh, global world that we are talking about, where there's, uh, there are problems arising, where the inflation is sitting countries and all that, we also see that people go and demonstrate it mm. to express their, their frustration and their anger and everything given to their government. How is it different from um, Ghana? Okay. If you should also um, let government know we are giving a, a pinch to government that there's a sense of urgency in what is happening because all our capital is being finished. We have done nothing wrong and we have not never run away from negotiations. Mm. So but the truth was that we met on the Kumasi issue and we finished it. They gave us the assurances. So tell them what, the, what were the assurances that they gave on the exchange rate what were the policy directions that they gave us on the exchange rate so that we did not listen and then came and, and, and do this? I'm and coming to the assurances because the deputy minister said that today the issues of taxation and benchmark and all those issues will be dealt with. Has that been done? No, that's why we are all seeking. If there are a, a clear policy direction and all that, you spell it out. Even that wouldn't be for Guta alone. It's for all the business community, including AGI, including all other sectors, isn't it? Because government policy direction is not only for Guta. So if there's something like that, uh, where is the com communicate? And so uh, we, we, we should probe this question. What we have done is to pro provoke public discourse about what is going on, because it's killing us. Mm. And we succeeded getting this discourse. That we are all talking about this. We should find solution to this. Otherwise, we'll, uh, our businesses will collapse. Mm. Mm. They are started collapsing. Mm. And everybody know that. Everybody know that. My, my brother, um, um, uh, the ADI president, is talking about benchmark value. Mm. He has been dwelling on this benchmark. This is the real time that AGI should prove themselves. Because cost of importation has been so high, it has been... Uh, doubled, quadrupled, and uh, uh, in, in ten, tenfold. So then, local industries, if prices, imported goods have gone up, show your ability, your capacity to supply the market. Let's take this advantage to patronize your goods. That's what you have, you have to be doing. Mm. You want the benchmark reduction, all that you sought was that. Um, it will be. It, it should be removed so that imported goods go high. Now imported goods have gone up thousand times at the roof. Why are they not able to take the place, take the opportunity? Because it is locally made. Mm. It is not imported. Okay. So once it's not imported, the goods that are made in Ghana should be very, very, very cheap, isn't it, my dear? Mm. So ask Mr. Dake that. What are they doing to portray or to advertise the goods that they manufacture in Ghana? Because in every bad situation, there should be a good opportunity. Mm -hmm. And this opportunity where it becomes very difficult, very expensive, then they have to showcase their products mm -hmm. because it is made in Ghana and it is not being imported. That it will be very expensive. Mm. That's what he has to dwell on. Um, and well, from what he's saying, if even the benchmark is remo removed, it means that they can still not um, guarantee that they can take the market with, with that. Is, the benchmark is very negligible. Is, is that the case? It to the and mind you, Aisha. Uh, yeah, okay, let, let him land.
Okay, go they ahead. Go ahead, Dr. Obi. Advantage of the benchmark reduction. They also enjoy it. And they are pretty with Ghana to a uh, government to sustain it for them. But he is so uh, overdwelling in this. Now we have the opportunity, golden opportunity. Please, uh, let's take this opportunity. We will support them. Because the way to go is to put others made in Ghana goods. And the time to do is now. That okay. uh, importation has become expensive. Mm. Showcase the products and let's buy. Okay. So he wants you to show them that you can give it at a cheaper price, same quality, so that they can come home. First and foremost, um, my colleague, um, Dr. Bain, shouldn't display his emotions in such economic issues. Why but not? <laughs> because the economic metrics is not as simple as to say that once the um, exchange rate factors that are displaying a steep depreciation that are following, hence, all of a sudden, the factories in Ghana should rise up to the occasion and there and there produce all manner of products. Mm. We did see, when this policy was tabled, two things that was happening. One, you were dislocating the developmental paradigm, mm. which indicates that the capacity of most factories were being distorted. Okay. And if you lose capacity, when the opportunity comes, you find it very difficult to even attain it. Mm. And therefore, we are advised against this policy. He says it in a form of pricing. It goes beyond pricing. Mm. When you are doing an economic development uh, paradigm or strat strategy, okay. you look beyond pricing, you look at developmental issue, you look at skills development, market sustainability, and it's a whole bunch of issues you look at. You just don't look at trade in simple trade, make money, and that ends it. Mm. Besides that, you realize that the exchange rate depreciation is not only affecting traders. Mm. It is affecting uh, manufacturers as well. Okay. And therefore, if the exchange rate fluctuations are affecting us, of course, our cost centers, and I, we, I indicated in my earlier statement, mm. our various cost centers will also be affected. Yes, we do not import every finished product. We import semi to me, because most of our enterprises are what? Value addition. Okay. All right. So therefore, our being should realize that it's not a blanket statement you go on the street to suggest that once uh, the cost of goods are gone up, local factories will just fit in. Mm. That is naivety. I'm sorry to say that. Mm. You should go beyond simple simplicity of the analysis of the economic issues. But when and look at the complications. Wouldn't that may also I, may help I, I. in solving the issue? So for it to solve the issue, that is why we keep... I, I heard you talk about toothpick that is being imported and all of that. We can get them here. So that could be a solution. Yourself. Wait, you first... You need, tell yeah, us. So, so I, please, don't just push it. Let's Listen. focus on stage by stage. You Go don't ahead. mix it. Because Obin loves to mix issues, <laughs> fix one and bring in, and, and, you, and that confusion brings a lot of cacophony of issues and okay. you don't seem to get a direction. All right. You want to build your, uh, your industries, and that is the sure way of bringing sustainability. If production is increased, it brings about sound productivity, export then comes it, you meet your local market demands, you make forex, it helps you to solve your forex issues. Mm. This is a simple economic issue. Okay. His son that does economics will tell him that, look, daddy, that is what it is. Mm. You do not import your way out, import finished goods and do simple trading mm. and expect your currency to be stable. It is not, never done anywhere in this world. Okay. He should know that. Mm. Trade liberalization or trade strategies from China or from any other country could be that they seek to, uh, what you call, invade your country with trade. Mm. And they can have a trade policy and back it with flexible export policies just to make sure they drive export. Okay. They do value addition. We have stated many times that primary products that are produced in Ghana, we do have some extent of capacity. Okay. When this benchmark discount value issue came in, we listed about 43 products okay. that governments should waive and give us the opportunity to build up and have a capacity to export both into Africa and into the entire world. We'll Our colleagues that. disagreed. Okay. And today, if once you disagree, manufacturers will not allow you to take their market because you do simple export. Mm. They might also take advantage of the policy to make sure that they survive. Okay. Today, there is pressure on the dollar it's as a result of such a policy, and therefore it opens the floodgates to make imports cheaper than production, mm. which is not in doubt. Okay. The government statistician has demonstrated this with the import inflation. 
suggesting that import inflation today is higher than the domestic. Mm. Why is it so? So Obin should gather with his, his team and study the developmental paradigm. Look at the data that is coming out from the Ghana Statistical Services, that which is coming from the rating agencies. Mm. And where is the trajectory of Ghana? If we seek to correct and do things right, Obin should exercise patience. Mm. His strategy today to close shops it's a strategy to get government's attention. Mm -hmm. But it is not a panacea to solving the problems. Okay. We of AGI believe that policy dialogue, table it, give government alternatives, mm -hmm. and suggest to government, if you go by this route, mm -hmm. as a matter of time, we can remedy this. H have you had such opportunities? Yeah, I mean, tomorrow we are doing the same. Okay. Tomorrow we are meeting our Greek minister and then the trade minister, mm -hmm. offering options why we believe that benchmark discount value is wrong, Reverse it as you promised by the end of the year. Mm. Give, give other tax incentives in the tax bracket. Mm -hmm. We mentioned that of the VAT, the cascading effect of the levies in the VAT structure is not the best. Why don't you do a simple input-output VAT and allow us? Government is deploying the EVAT. Okay. Government is the right decision. <coughs> Go ahead, do the EVAT, mm -hmm. and let's collect post-sales tax. Okay. You will make more money mm -hmm. than do pre-production tax. Okay. We've advocated that. Pre-production taxation is not the best. Post-production taxation is the best. Mm. And if government will go with the EVAT, we support government to do the same. Mm. In a matter of time, Ghana will be better off. Okay. Take the hard decisions for our country. And that is what will bring about a structural transformation. M not simple trading. Mr. Agri, it does look like now each one for himself, God not for at us all. It is for Ghana. What, what's We're your plan? The, um, the, the issue... I, I agree with him to a large extent. Okay. But we have a fundamental issue, which is not the benchmark value. Okay. You see, the very moment your imports, you are saying because we are producing locally, therefore we should increase the values for imports. Okay. What you are doing is you are impoverishing the people more, mm. giving your own citizens becoming more poorer. Okay. Now, we are in this country. When we produce, just to export across the borders, mm -hmm. in Cote d'Ivoire, certain products are 10%. In Ghana here, you cannot export certain products to Cote d'Ivoire. They will not allow you to do that. Okay. Why? Because when we look at our tax tariffs for the exports, it's even higher than what they are accepting in their country. Okay. Now in Ghana, within the West African zone, we are saying we want to bring the common tariffs down mm -hmm. to a minimum of 10%. Okay. So if you are going above 35% or 50%, because that's the highest around Africa, mm. and you think that you are doing the best, and therefore we that should, we should encourage that. That is preferential product. Mm -hmm. It is not a no. cross Even the common you see, external you, you, you keep on advising government on this trend. Okay. That, that is an ECOWAS street. Mm -hmm. Benchmark will not solve. Look, we have a fundamental issue with the taxes that we are charging our local manufacturers, okay. electricity that we pay, water that they use. You see, the, those are producing uh, water, for instance. Okay. What they have to put in place to f go through the filtration to get water for you to drink mm. is so expensive. Stop going to the micro. There are cross-cutting issues. Are, these are the cross things that we need to policies that will give okay. us a we, leveraging we, grounds to move we, on. We, okay. we, 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 need, to we need to look at that. There are factors of production in every space. You see, so, what if, if, it comes, if it comes to that, mm. there are things that you have said which is correct. Okay. But the benchmark value will not solve the problem. Okay. We it are saying that we are making the that people is making poorer. Production Look, what when, you call when, expensive. When, when the minister said we are going to restore the full rate of 50, uh, benchmark, okay. and therefore it is coming at 50, because they reduce it at 50, and therefore they want to mm. put it back. Yeah. Look, I told him, the very moment you do this, in the next three months, we are going to face challenges with the economy. Mm -hmm. Already, government borrowing is so high mm. that we are not telling them the truth. That At the very moment, government. Aisha, wants to what pay are the alternative your, solutions? Your, mm. your the complaints are so much. Give the, the government, government the alternative of solutions. Okay. That you is see. what we keep tabling. Okay. What are your alternative solutions to government? But, we we, at, we at cannot go into all that. Then why are you advocating? Well, you well, no, but if you have the solutions, very things, you have the very things that you said, I would have said the same thing to government. So then why don't you hold government fit to the front? As we sit here now, mm. we are looking at the simplest solution. You see, we cannot use theory to rule the country. Come on. And the practical issues. What okay. are you it's a combination. Look right. at the practical issues. It is Whether a combination. your people are able to afford the things that 
is being come is coming onto the table for them to eat. Mm. They cannot afford. Mm. Fuel is even going up yeah. and keep on going up. Today, one gallon is 60 cities. Mm. Why is it going up in 60 cities? Mm -hmm. And do you think Ghanaians can afford? Yeah. When you are still paying them below the wages that they're supposed to get? No, no. You see, you see, you see what so I keep saying? Look, when you still moving, to, okay. to, when you move so the boat, you it's, don't it's attack It's a mix the of issue. everything. All right. Fuel so is very expensive. Let, let, let me, what is alternative? Let, me bring, let me bring it's Professor a, Gachi. Let me bring Professor Gachi in this conversation. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Let me bring in Professor Gachi. Prof, I'm grateful for your time. Now, we're talking about whether we are using theories or practical uh, issues to solve uh, the problem that confront us. Is it the issue of benchmark or is it the issue of CD to dollar exchange rate? Is it inflation rate? What exactly is our problem? And how do we need to tackle? What's the prudent way of tackling that problem? Prof, kindly unmute for me. Yeah. I will not go into the issue of theory and practicals uh, because they are all relevant in nation building. Mm. What is very important is that both theory and practice and experience should inform uh, an effective policy to drive the country. Mm. So we need to look at our policy. Okay. Uh, it is not merely about benchmark. We have myriads of problems affecting uh, the export sector, the manufacturing sector, and even the things that we import into the country. Mm. Uh, I think what is valuable for a country is to import uh, what we call intermediate goods okay. so that it will go through the value addition process uh, and create jobs, uh, develop the framework for revenue generation for the country. Mm. That is what we should be doing. Okay. But over time, the number of basic commodities that we can produce in this country have been exchanged uh, for import from other countries. Okay. And the number keep increasing. Uh, if you look at the statistics uh, that is coming from the Saska service, it also shows that most of our staples uh, we are now becoming net importers of the staples. So this is the area that we need to develop policy to address them. So it's not about one single issue. Mm. It's myriad of issues. Mm, okay. Now, if you take, if you take uh, exchange rate, for example, and inflation, they are related. Now, if uh, you are importing all manner of things, the simplest approach is to target those items that you know every uh, every, 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 every basic school child knows that you have efficiency in producing. Mm. You target them, begin to increase their production, add value. That is what you are supposed to do. But as we speak, it is not very clear whether we appreciate the disaggregation of the service data for us to see, to know that these are the areas of problem and begin to address them, target them, and put in place the policy. So I believe we sh our policies should be targeting the problems we have, and uh, I believe with time we will be able to, to resolve. Mm. Um, uh, Dr. Obing, so you, you are closing for six uh, days. After six days, if the situation doesn't change, then what? So we are not giving an ultimatum. That's not what they're doing. What we want to do is to make a statement. Okay. And then the statement is that there's a sense of urgency in what uh, the situation now in our economy. Mm. It's as simple as that. And we, are, we have done it loud and clear. And so the, uh, our uh, members who want to uh, uh, make this statement, they say that they will open on Monday. So uh, it depends on them. When we come back, this, uh, I know we have access um, to the uh, ministry. We so engage them. Uh, what we have succeeded in doing is that we have provoked the dis discuss. And that's what we are doing now. And it, it is very important. We have also said that we wanted to send a clear message to the consuming public that we are not the cause of their woes. 
we are not the cause of price hikes in the country, and we've done that. And we've said that we wanted to send a, a, a message to our suppliers that we have a peculiar problem in um, our country, and that's why we are not able to service our um, credit. And so we've been able um, to do this. And then the uh, government will, will uh, then get the message and then fashion out a policy that will address this. And that one, you cannot um, give a timeline that uh, we give you ultimatum, do this and all that. We are matured, more matured than this. Mm -hmm. All that we sought to do is to draw government attention, the Ghanaian attention, and the international community that this is what our plight is, the mm -hmm. level of our suffering as a result of the extreme rate and then the interest rate and the inflation. Mm -hmm. And that's all that we have said. But let me say something small to uh, my brother, uh, AGI president. Mm -hmm. um, he just admitted that they are not immune from the foreign exchange program. But you are, look how many factors. The, the reason why we have to patronize made in Ghana goods is that you will not depend on forest so much that once we patronize your goods, then um, we are saving the dollar. But you see, there's a thin line between the Ghanaian importer and then our local manufacturers because mm. they import about 90% of their input of uh, production. About so there's a thing like, you see, what is well industrialization is what probably we all have to support the president to do is the 1D1F. In that case, we have the raw material base, almost everything here, and we are adding the value. We should be able to do that. We should be able to find uh, those goods that we have comparative advantage mm. and then make it a hub of production in Ghana. That's the only solution. And then we do not say that we produce everything that we do not have the capacity to do. Even some goods, because of geographical position or localization of that industry, does not make it possible uh, for, uh, for production in that geographical area. So there are so many things that come to play for manufacturing. So it shouldn't be said that you say that you are also disturbed by forest and uh, foreign exchange. Because <laughs> it is the same behavior that the importer is doing is the same thing that the manufacturer is doing. Otherwise, we've given you the opportunity. Now, produce for us. Because an import has become so expensive. And so we depend on the local produce and buy. Is this too difficult to say? Because this, this is the direction now. And we, are, we will be so very happy to patronize babies, Ghana goose. And we took the challenge. They should yeah, let yeah. us see all let, the Let him land, I'll let you He's come. just running the same thing. Uh, same if, thing. If, if for no reason, it shouldn't be that every manufactured good in Ghana is not competitive at this time. Because uh, uh, importation has become very expensive. So this is the time we have to manifest our buy the bread in Ghana goods. Now you say that they are talent. They cannot produce. They cannot <laughs> take the space. They cannot take the advantage. Dr. Um, Bain. He said that we should prefer a solution. Dr. I, Dr. I, 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 I believe he was trying to infer that we do excessive um, importation. No, no, yes. No, no. We Dr. do Dr. excessive Bain. importation. And that is uh, the problem that we are facing now. Mm, okay. But there's a solution to it. Because the local share, the local share of importation is just minute. And he knows that. Those who do the bulk of the importation are the tunnel malls and all that. Those big, they bring 5,000 containers, 10,000, and the local bring just a peanut. So he should direct his frustration on this. And it come and support us in our quest that the investment law should be reviewed so that it can tighten uh, uh, the, uh, 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 the investors coming into the retail space and we drive them into oh, the manufacturing sector and then it creates the space. And we have said it so like, and we gave <laughs> recommendations of one, two, three, four, five, a loving recommendation in our declaration. And I will post it to you, Asha, as I, I, I finish, and then you can read to my good friend, the ADR president. <laughs> now, look, I myself no. have... I, I approached AGI 
And I said that, let's do joint press conference so that we can take this uh, tension away mm. and that we work together. And then we tell you what you want. What's your plan? Listen, Dr. B, Dr. B, Dr. B must understand. Doc, Doc, take a break. Take some water. Okay, Doc. I've sent the only branch. I've sent the only branch. And I've sent... <laughs> I keep telling Doc. All right, so he made, so that, many, he, he made, made that about point. three or four issues. Listen, okay. doctor should realize, please pardon me, this is not, he's displaying some extent of ignorance about the said my that, 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 that is a bit too hard. That's why I say you should pardon me, because okay. it is not simple to say that we have we made in Ghana goods are purely or 100% uh, Ghanaian products. Ghanaians are Ghanaian products, mm. largely agricultural products. Okay. So if the inputs are basically uh, what do you call Ghanaian product, mm. some way somehow you might bring some intermediate product, mm. and you remember the professor mentioned it, mm. or some intermediate product could form 30, 60 percent of your composition okay. for for you to attain a final product. Mm. So the to all manufacturing industries in Ghana, a large extent we do some importation to complement the local product with skills yeah, and labor to get a finished product. Yeah. So a bin cannot suggest that we do not get a, the, what they call the effect of the exchange rate and therefore we should display our capacity that we are local factories and therefore all our products coming out shouldn't have exchange rate, mm. uh, what they call uh, backlash. That's why I say he's then on that basis he's displaying ignorance in the manufacturing setup. I think that is not the case. Is that you That's why I keep saying we are also being affected. We, of so course, why not come together to fight together? Well, that is a different matter. Mm. Or being keep mixing about three, four issues. He box them in a in one issue. He adds emotion to it. He stirs everybody up and creates a session. Okay. Please let's tackle issues one after the other. Okay. What are the but issues? Industrialization has different structures. We can come from the factor stage. Your factor stage, you have enough raw materials and cheap labor. Mm. You can move into another stage, what we call the efficiency and investment what stage. What stage are we now? Ghana is in between the factor and the inv investment stage. Mm. And where, what strategies are we supposed so to adapt it, and to that deal is with when this? you allow government and government policy and the paradigm of development and it defines it. Mm. So this government comes into power and said, we want to do industrialization. We want to do one district, one factory. Mm. And therefore, the uh, private sector support government, go out there and create factories. Okay. When government is doing that, government's role is to create enabling policies okay. that will make sure that the factories how their works. Do we have those policies? And some of the policies are there. Some are inimical. And we said benchmark is inimical to uh, manufacturing. Okay. I missed many other factors. Mm. But if that particular f a policy has significant effect and makes import of finished product mm. of all kinds cheaper mm. than all intermediate goods and value addition product from the local market, mm -hmm. scrap it. Okay, so so I mean, basically, the exchange rates yes. have been one of the biggest because issues it's a for cross -cutting all factor. of you. It's a cross. We call it cross. What's the issues? correlation between that and the benchmark issue? So no, so so right, like, they become a cyclical issue. Mm. So once the benchmark becomes cheaper mm. and everybody's important, mm. what happens is that the demand on dollar rises. Mm. And once the demand on dollar rises, what happens? Then it affects the exchange rate. Mm. If government can meet it, because when it happens that way, export is low production is low, mm. and the import is coming in. Mm. And we are all demanding the same dollar to go and exp uh, to import. Mm. What happens to the dollar? But, so that becomes the relationship. But if you don't have what you need for your production, so therefore you, you realize in some, some jurisdictions, I read recently in, in Ethiopia, mm. they are making sure only essential products are imported. Okay. So it becomes, the and by virtue of the WTO laws, mm. you cannot ban. You, you can only use tariffs. You can only use... Uh, what do you call, uh, some non-tariff barriers mm. to make sure that you have your country uh, in a good position. It happened in the case of the U.S. when the, the what do you call, the steel industry was going down and the car companies were going down. Mm. What did Trump do mm. to the Chinese? Mm. So this, and they call it trade wars. 
So you look out for your common interest. What is the interest of Ghana? Mm. Bring in policies to give you the favor. Mm. And if the policies are not in favor of the local producers, mm. we need to state it. Dr. Dahir, the that, guts that well, the I'm US saying, and China I'm have, Ghana doesn't it. have that guts. No, I hope you, you know that. Not, but you see, the, I'm giving you scenarios. Mm. Please put it in context. Okay. Don't generalize it. Okay. We're using products. We're mm. using the industrialization agenda, clear from government. Okay. And if we believe a policy is not in our favor, we got to talk about it. That is why in the WTO rules, you have what we call the anti-dumping measures mm. and countervailing measures to make sure that when you are bringing a product to the country that does not inure or is injurious to your local industry, there's provision to tweak it. Mm. Tell Obin to go and read about that mm. and stop generalizing every issue. Okay. Industrialization is the only way out to help this country out. And stop all this issue of generalizing and putting on my three issues on the basket mm. and then be sensationalized about What's the role what of that? government in all of this? Policy. Ms. Ms. Policy Ms. formulation. Okay. And create a conducive have, environment. Okay, Mr. Agri, you, so... You, you, you are saying the obvious you have uh, taken emotions out of this. <laughs> but you seem to drive yourself in <laughs> Because it's all this way. <laughs> you see, um, the depreciation of the city, okay. I am seeing it from three sectors. Okay. The importer, the manufacturing and government itself. Yeah. Now, if government goes borrowing and it's time for you to pay your creditors interest, it's the same dollar that you used to pay. Mm -hmm. The bonds that you take in Ghana City, you pay them in Ghana City. Mm -hmm. So when you go to the Bank of Ghana and the Bank of Ghana hasn't got that funds in there, you come to the public market where mm -hmm. all of us are picking up our dollars. Mm -hmm. So who has the advantage? Government has the advantage. You put the money in there in the banks for them to give us yeah. so that we can at least send our bills there for them to do the payments on our behalf. Okay. Government turns back to take some of the money, which is meant for businesses. Yeah. Now business go, they don't get the dollar. We see importers going for private people's money. Is that what I'm saying? Im importers, I'm talking about the dollar. Uh, Importers from the local markets mm. where we say uh, of the black Paris market Bureau and yeah. all that, the black market. Now, when you go to someone who can provide you over 100,000 at a time, where does, did that person get that money? Get the money. I hear they are the ones you, you who determine the, 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 the rates. Are you encouraging, you go, are you encouraging you the strictism you, of please, dollars? Is that please. what you are suggesting? No. You go to the banks and you don't get. The dollar so go to the street and so buy. So who is giving the dollar to the allergy to do the black market? Okay. You see, mm. so there is a fundamental problem. What is your solution to that concern? What is your solution? We are looking at what, what has brought. Yeah, there are major causes, please. Mm. You Let's see. not trivialize this so issue. We need go to the we, main we, factors. Doc, what is your solution? Please, doc, please, let him please, make the point. Please. We need to understand if we the issue. Identify the issue. To be we all know the issue. The solutions. Give solutions. We doc, all doc, know let him make it. Doc, no, 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 doc, allow him no. to make it. Who does Go ahead, Mr. Agri. Mr. Agri, you go ahead. Go ahead and make your point. You know. Does the other person know? Nobody knows. You know. So offer Does the other person know? Propose solutions. So let them go understand. Then we give them the solution. Let him make his point. Yes. Go ahead. If we don't do that, mm. or if you are if you are having these challenges, mm. then we keep on. We, we ask yourself, what are we going to do to solve the problem? Yeah. A country where we cannot export eighty percent of our produce. How do you export if you don't produce? You see. Mm. How do you export if you don't industrialize? Everything that we are bringing into this country to produce, we are being imported to produce them here. It's okay to import now, intermediate goods. Something like tomato, tomato puree. Okay. That we have to produce. We have this to lecture. bring from the not time for a lecture. Bring the the the, the puree itself and produce and then export. When you export to Nigeria puree, mm. Nigeria will tell you they will not take it because it's not hundred percent holy. Aisha, are we in for a lecture? Okay. Now so, what we are saying is that propose solutions. If, if if we want to produce the tomato in this country, give the farmers the needed uh, 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 seeds. Mm. Let them produce for the for the factories. Yeah. But you don't bring the factories. And then you ask them to bring their raw materials, come and fill it in there, and expect them to export into which country? Okay. Where they will not do that. Okay. Look, those who are doing the free trade business <laughs> is because we have the space for them do to do. You understand produce what intermediary goods? Okay. Are. So yeah. hopefully yeah. you ask have the solution. So, and you say you are so meeting so government if, tomorrow. If we are solving so, the problem. We must take it from the roots. 
to the top. You can oh, okay. you always take it from the root. Sometimes you do a mixed method approach. Okay. Because let, 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 let me. The person needs the demand now. When you don't have the seed. So you don't time. blame anybody. Who when says you don't blame nobody? Our input goes All far propositions and stop this narration. So tomorrow you are meeting government and you are going to offer some of the solutions to them, right? Yes, we'll do that. Okay. Let me bring in Professor Gatti. Prof, now. Uh, producer price index 45 uh, over 45 percent inflation rate 37.2 percent what does this mean to the ordinary Ghanaian uh, Mr. Agri just mentioned that wages are still below the belt and um, does it mean that the consumer is going to be paying more uh, for what they buy well I think the inflation figure is a historical figure that is what they have been paying already so when the inflation figures are announced they are announced with, uh, uh, they are not announced for the current month, they are announced for the previous month. Okay. So the inflation figures you are talking about, they are what the people have experienced. Okay. It's, not, it's not as if they are going to experience it, they are experiencing that. What, that, so, what signal does it give for, I mean, well, going if you forward? Have, um, if you have your CPI going up and the producer price is also going up, it only indicates that there are further increases that you should expect. Okay. And also bearing in mind that you have some major sensitive indicators to inflation, mm. like fuel prices, like transport fare. They are going up still. I think we just had a, another increase from around 11.5 or so cities to uh, almost uh, uh, 16 cities. That is huge. We have what we call a pass-through period. So that pass-through period indicates that uh, it is likely that CPI will continue to go up mm. uh, until such a time that we are able to put in place policy that will address the fundamental issues. Well, what are you picking? Some are putting the dollar, to, uh, the exchange rate at 15 cities by close of year. Is that what you're also picking? Well, there is um, a possibility that the exchange rate will become worse uh, because it doesn't seem that we have a very clear policy to address the, the, the exchange rate. Right. Let me give uh, so, Dr. Daka one minute. You are meeting government tomorrow. What, what solutions are you going to be putting on the table? One minute, please. Well, we'll still discuss. Um, we have about three issues that we seek to do. One has to do with um, a policy like the benchmark discount value and its um, deterrent to manufacturing. We'll have another section with government to discuss taxes. Mm. And later on, we'll do another one between the government, government statistician and the BOG to look at uh, the trends and uh, what are the major trends that need some specific intervention so that mm. as government or the BOG deploys what we call the average infl inflation target model, mm. they could be specific. We are asking for a mixed method approach to tackle the trends that are the drivers of inflation, and mm. we, I think it's all known already how many uh, trends are there. The food basket is. Let's see how it goes and tomorrow. We, so I'm we grateful will for your, state your, by your state time, Doctor that Dake. That. That's all Acts time will allow us, <laughs> Doctor Dake. Thank you so much, Mr. No, <laughs> Agri. <laughs> Just a second, please. Yeah. They will cut us off. Is increasing the benchmarks. Yeah. Use that went for to reduce taxes for the manufacturer. I'm grateful That's for your time. Professor Gachi, thank you so much. And Dr. Obing, thanks for your time. Enjoy the rest of your evening.